Mornings with Kaya Handley on ABC Newcastle. Welcome. I was wondering if you could start by telling me how you quit smoking. With a vape. Funny that. <laughs> Funny that. Okay. Um, and nothing else, actually. It wow. was just a vape. That's a snippet from a campaign that's running right now in New Zealand. It's organised by the Ministry of Health. It makes clear that the health effects of vaping are not known and that if you don't smoke, you shouldn't use e-cigarettes. But it spruiks vaping as a way to help quit smoking. On the other side of the world, in the US city of San Francisco, the sale of e-cigarettes has been banned until we know more about their health effects. And this is a long-running debate. What do we do with e-cigarettes? Here in Australia, the sale of nicotine for e-cigarettes is highly restricted, but vaping itself is not. So what should Australia be doing when it comes to vaping? Continue as we are or look at a ban like other parts of the world. Today we have two guests on this topic. You can join the conversation as well. Give me a call, one 1233 Let's meet our guests. We've got Emeritus Professor Simon Chapman from the University of Sydney School of Public Health. Good morning. Hi, Kaya. And tobacco treatment specialist, conjoint associate professor Colin Mendelson from the University of New South Wales. Good morning. Good morning, Kaya. Now, uh, both of you have very different views on this. Simon, I'll start with you first. New Zealand has launched this campaign, clearly spruiking vaping as an alternative to tobacco cigarettes. Sh- should this be something we consider? Well, they're arguing, as you as you said in your introduction, we don't know what the long-term consequences of uh, a lot of people using these products are. And that's uh, obviously true because we didn't really get a handle on how dangerous cigarette smoking was for 20, 30, 40 years after it had mass uptake at the beginning of last century. And with vaping, well, we've uh, really only had large numbers of people in some countries doing it for about 10 years. So that's really in its infancy from understanding what you know the consequences if any are going to be for chronic diseases like lung diseases heart diseases and and, and cancers um so if they're arguing though that it's a, a really effective way for people to get uh, to quit smoking um the evidence is actually quite poor on that um the best studies that we've got are ones which we call cohort studies and these follow people over a long time and and then examine what we call persistent abstinence not just whether they've stopped on the day they get the questionnaire for the second time but have they been off cigarette smoking for a long time and one of the biggest ones of these is a study from the United States called the PATH study and um, I've got the figures in front of me Um, people who were using nicotine replacement therapy, well, 6.1% of those had quit smoking for a persistent uh, number of months. Varenicline and bupropion, these are prescribed drugs, 10.2% and 10.3% respectively. Cold turkey, which is actually the way that most people who used to smoke and no longer do, 12.5%. But e-cigarettes were way way down the bottom with only 5.6%. So a lot of people are using e-cigarettes, but unfortunately they're not, um, you know, living up to the hype. But the the conversation that we're seeing in New Zealand is just it's not about quitting smoking. It's just moving from one to the other, right? One that we that many studies do say is less harmful. Well, the less harmful point is is really we we don't know. I mean, it's, people are are saying things like, well, you know, they're ninety five percent less dangerous than smoking. Now, the study which uh, produced that figure, 95%, was a a group of 12 people who were pulled together um, in a process that a lot of people have questioned. And if you look at the paper online, which you can do, it says down toward the back of the study, it says a limitation of this study is the lack of hard evidence for the harms of most products on most of the criteria. What they were doing in that study was comparing the the, the likely harm of, say, cigarettes, nicotine replacement therapy, e-cigarettes, those sorts of things. And they said that we just don't have hard evidence to know how harmful they were. But out of that, they said, oh, it's 95% less harmful. Well, that's really just voodoo science. 
Colin, I'll bring you into the conversation here. You believe that vaping should be widely available and, in fact, that nicotine should be far more uh, attainable than what it is in Australia at the moment. Why, why is that? Well, vaping is the most popular method of quitting in the world. So people are actually using it widely and finding it useful, and it's arguably the most effective method for quitting. I mean, Simon's quoted certain research, but I think when you look at the, uh, the uh, an overview of the research, when you look at randomised controlled trials, population studies, user surveys, you know, the changes in national smoking rates where smoking where vaping is available, and I think we have fairly convincing evidence. And look, I see it every day in my practice. I, I treat smokers, and people repeatedly tell me, look, they've tried everything to quit, and, and everything has failed, and they switch to vaping. And we, there's overwhelming scientific evidence that vaping is much safer than smoking. And of course, it's better for people to take nothing into their lungs, but we're talking about smokers of whom two in three would otherwise die if they continue to smoke because they just can't quit and and vaping is another way out that we you know how can we deprive them of that do you have concern though that as e-cigarettes are seen as trendy and fashionable that non-smokers are finding their way to e-cigarettes absolutely not and the the international research is very clear about that so current use of e-cigarettes by non-smokers in uh, almost every survey i've seen is less than one percent of non-smokers are current users of e-cigarettes. E-cigarettes are almost exclusively used by uh, current smokers or ex-smokers. So, you know, the risk of uptake by non-smoking adults is, is, is an exaggerated concern, which, you know, we're not seeing in the real world. We've seen leading uh, health and research organisations here in Australia, like the NHMRC, they released a statement on e-cigarettes. Uh, in their statement, they say that we just do not know the extent to which harm is reduced in, in vaping. We just do not know enough at this stage. What do you say to, to claims like that? Well, what we do know is that two out of three smokers will die from their smoking. And, and look, like our all new products, we, we don't, the long-term effects of vaping have yet to be established. But based on the current knowledge, we know what's in, in, in vapour. We know that the chemicals, we know how potent those chemicals are. And it's certain to be, almost definitely certain, I'm sure it's certain to be much less harmful than smoking. I mean, the Royal College of Physicians, Simon's talked about this 95% figure and his often made this claim that it's based on a particular study by a group of scientists. In fact, the Royal College of Physicians in the UK has done a separate independent analysis. Public Health England has done an independent separate analysis, comprehensive review of the evidence. They've both concluded that that's a reasonable estimate of the harm of vaping compared to smoking, and that's what we need to be comparing it to because people who vape are almost exclusively um, smokers. Uh, former sm- and former smokers. We do see a lot of statements, though, in this research that says, based on the available evidence, do we need more evidence? Well, we can wait another 30 years until we have the evidence down to two decimal points of certainty. But in the meanwhile, a lot of people uh, will die from smoking unnecessarily. I think we have more than enough evidence. Now, there are over 40 million vapors in the world. You know, vaping's been around since 2006 7 and gradually increasing. Um, we're seeing very little harm, if any significant harm, uh, from vaping. And, um, and based on the science, the basic science, the chemicals in vaping are, are m- relatively minor. Now, those, the, almost all of the chemicals in vapor are not present in vapor. Those that are there are mostly less than 1% of what they are in tobacco. I mean, it's ludicrous to suggest that vaping could have anywhere near the harm of tobacco smoke. Simon, I'll, I'll bring that point back to you as well. All the studies that we have looked up in the lead up to this chat basically said more evidence is needed. How hard is it to research uh, something like this in public health at the moment while it's sort of happening in our society? Kaya, look, what I'm going to say at the moment is that I can't hear a single word that Colin's been oh, saying. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, so uh, I did hear the last question that you put to him about, you know, whether there might be uptake amongst young people. I mean, the, the whole pitch about e-cigarettes has been uh, for smokers. It's for smokers who say that they can't give up uh, and that they 
switch thing uh, that they, you know, being told is less dangerous. Um, on that question about whether kids take it up, really, really alarming evidence has just been published two weeks ago in the British Medical Journal um, for the case of Canada, where they've had in a massive upswing in vaping because of a product called Juul, J W J U U L. And what they found is looking at the, the, the measure of people, kids who smoke for 15 plus days uh, a week, well, vaping increased 71% in, uh, in these kids and smoking at the same time went up 54%. Now, the Canadians have not seen um, a rise in smoking in the last 30 years. And all of a sudden, when vaping goes up, Smoking goes up in kids, and I think that, if you like, that's the family silver in public health in Australia that we've got to protect. Smoking rates in, in adults and in kids are the lowest they've ever been in Australia because of all the things that we've done over the last 40 years to get you know tobacco smoking down. We've been ex incredibly successful at doing that. And so here we come, here we get a, a product which is coming along saying, look, you know, this is, a, this is a new breakthrough. It's a game changer. Just let it be sold in corner shops and, you know, wherever. Um, I think we've got to really, really be very, very careful that we don't let the evil genie out of the bottle. I'll bring you, so, yeah, I'll, I'll bring yeah, you, just bring so, you back to the, the idea of research though. Is yeah, it, yeah, is sure. It, is it challenging to research something that is, you know, in our society, people are picking it up, they're putting it down, they're making their own choices at the moment. How hard is it to d yeah. determine uh, harm long term when it's happening right now? Well, um, long-term harm, of course, can't be determined in the short term. What we can do is that we can look at what um, sort of biomarkers of potential long-term harm. We can sort of see, look at changes at sort of cells, at, you know, in people's airways and things like that. And there really is um, quite a lot of stuff coming through now, which is showing, if not red lights, certainly amber lights about, woo, you know, this is this is not something which is totally benign. This is not something like breathing in steam. And when we think about, you know, what vapors are doing, the average vapor uh, inhales 200 times a day and the average smoker inhales about 110 times a day. And so you multiply 200 times a day by 365 days, so you've got 73,000 uh, point blank bastings of the airways with these sort of microparticles, which are sort of vaporized um, flavoring agents, nicotine, propylene glycol. There has never been uh, in human history any precedent for this. There has never been anybody who, you know, who's, who's done this sort of thing for, for a long, long time. So we really don't know what the consequences of it are going to be. We've got our fingers crossed that it could be benign and it may even be beneficial. But, um, you know, if it turns out to be um, not beneficial and we have let the evil genie out of the bottle, it's, very, it's going to be very, very difficult to get back in. Simon, so, mean, I'm just interested to put to you, Brad, and a number of others who have been joining this conversation today have questioned why would you ban vaping but allow cigarettes? Can that be compared? <laughs> Oh, look, that's a, that's a very obvious question to ask. But cigarettes have been around for, um, what, the beginning of last century. And uh, we've done everything we could possibly do wrong in the regulation of these cigarettes. We allowed them to be sold everywhere. We allowed them to be advertised, to be put in brilliant coloured packets, um, you know, sports sponsorship, cultural sponsorship, everything. And and over the last 40 years, we've been winding all that back. We've got the most expensive cigarettes in the world. We're not allowed to display them in shops. We've got plain packaging. And we're seeing a big downturn in smoking because of that. So, you know, what we need to do is to learn from the mistakes of the past. And if e-cigarettes are going to be um, waved through by 
regulatory authorities in Australia, and that's not a foregone conclusion at all. But if they were to be waved through, we would not make this. We should not make the same mistakes that we've done with with cigarettes. We should make them available in highly restricted ways. In the ways, for example, that we make uh, pharmaceutical drugs available to people um, through, you know, on a sort of a form of prescription, if you like. It's 9.30, you're on ABC Newcastle. We're talking vaping this morning. Should it be banned? Should, should it not? I've got Simon Chapman from the University of Sydney and Colin Mendelson from the University of New South Wales. One final question for each of you. I'll ask both of you this question. Simon, I'll start with you. What do you want people to remember and think about as this conversation continues in our community? Well, there's an awful lot of commercially motivated hype out there, um, understandably, for people who have invested in stocking up shops and, you know, um, trying to sell this stuff. Really take independent, uh, take a critical look at what's, what all this stuff is. Don't just sort of believe people who are up there spruiking it. Look at what, you know, independent reviews are saying. I've got something up on my blog where I've summarized the views of 45 different world expert agencies expressing expressing caution about this. So if you just go to simonchapman6.com, you'll find the article there. And, um, you know, d- don't just listen to people who are out there swinging, you know, swinging for this thing. They may be right, but they may be very, very wrong. And, and the consequences of them being wrong um, uh, are could be quite catastrophic. Consequences of me being wrong is that people will say, oh, well, you know, people like Simon Chapman were wrong. Well, you know, I'll live with that, but whether those people can live with themselves being wrong if they, if they, if they let that evil genie out of the bottle big time is, is really a different question. Colin Mendelson, same question to you. What do you want people to remember and think about because this conversation will continue in our communities here internationally as well. What, what's the one takeout that you want people to have as they're thinking about this? Yeah, look, I I think the main goal here is to reduce death and disease from smoking. And I think um, vaping is now the most popular quitting method in the world. It's used widely um, in in all countries where it's available. It's used widely and it's being successful. And I think if we take vaping away, we're taking away a very popular quitting method that's saving lives. If we take it away... Uh, like from in the US, where, where, and countries have found where they've taken these products away, where they're not available, smoking rates amongst young people rise. And and I must say, Simon's comments about Canada, I just quickly challenge that because since that study, Statistics Canada has come out and found that in fact smoking rates have fallen in young people uh, from 2017 to 18. So that study, um, I, I think, has been superseded by this bigger and official study. Um, so I don't agree that smoking rates are rising in Canada. But I think we need to think about public health. And this is a powerful tool to help smokers to quit because in Australia, smoking rates are not falling. In the last six years, they've slowed dramatically. We need to think of alternative ways to help smokers quit. And we now have one and we shouldn't withhold it. Colin Mendelson, Simon Chapman, appreciate both your time uh, on this issue this morning. I feel like there are so many other paths we could go down with this. It's one that we're going to continue talking about, but I appreciate you joining us on Mornings. Thank you. Thanks, Colin. Yeah, thank you.